In part one, we talked about the Virtuous Mission and Operation Snake Eater, the sacrifice of the boss, and how the operative known as Naked Snake came to be known as Big Boss. In part two, we will talk about the origins of his private military group, Militaire Sans Frontier, pardon my French, and how Skullface and XOF entered the fray. Before we begin, we wanted to briefly talk about the intriguing case of Portable Ops. The 2006 stealth game for the PSP was not directed by Hideo Kojima, however, according to some interviews, Kojima has outright said that some of the elements are part of the saga. However, this is a myth. We will explain this in detail and why this has led to some confusion. During a Twitch interview with Jeff Keighley, Kojima was asked whether Portable Ops is considered canon, and he stated, That is a very difficult question. For Portable Ops, I was a producer, so of course I saw the planning. I went through all of the game, but I didn't write the story myself. So some of the details are a bit off. So I would put it, when you dive into the details, there are several small things that don't seem to be, according to the overall Metal Gear Saga, that seem to be outside of this world. So to put it in a way, I guess the main story of Portable Ops is part of the saga, is part of the official Metal Gear timeline, while some of the small details that are in Portable Ops are outside of the saga, not part of the main timeline of the game. However, right after this, Kojima stated the following in the same interview. How to say this, rather than saying whether it's a main story or not, it's more like, within me things are expressed as a division between those a Hideo Kojima games that I directed, wrote, and designed, and those things where I was a producer. This is a clear indication that according to Kojima, games that have a Hideo Kojima game tag are part of the saga and nothing else. Furthermore, he finally explicitly confirmed in an interview with IGN in 2015 that only his games are part of the saga. He stated, I will always say this will be my last Metal Gear, but the games in the series that I've personally designed and produced, Metal Gear on the MSX, Metal Gear 2, Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, 3, 4, and Peace Walker, and now Metal Gear Solid 5 are what constitute a single Metal Gear saga. With Metal Gear Solid 5, I am finally closing the loop on that saga. In that sense, this will be the final Metal Gear Solid. Even if the Metal Gear franchise continues, to me, this is the last Metal Gear. So there you have it, Portable Ops is not canon. So we won't be covering that game in this series, regardless of how awesome the story was in that game. Anyway, that's enough explanation, let's get moving. Big Boss, who prefers to go by his original name, Naked Snake, left the United States of America after he discovered the true nature of the boss's involvement in Operation Snake Eater. Soon after, he began working with Revolver Ocelot and Major Zero on Cypher, the organization formed using the legacy which in the future will go on to become the Patriots. However, due to their ideological differences, Zero interprets the boss's vision for the world as having complete control, whereas Big Boss simply wanted a soldier's refuge. In a project known as Les Enfants Terribles, which we'll speak to in later parts, Snake parted ways with Zero under acrimonious circumstances. It is now 1974, 10 years after Operation Snake Eater and Snake, with Kazuhira Miller, has found a private military group known as Militaire Sans Frontier translating to an army without borders, based off the coast of Colombia. Kaz and Snake soon receive two visitors, potentially clients for the MSF. They're Ramon Galvez Mania, a renowned Costa Rican scholar, and a girl named Paz Ortega, who is his student. Galvez wants to hire the MSF to look into and ultimately push back an armed force that has entered into and occupied Costa Rica, who themselves cannot do anything about it thanks to the peace constitution and the fact that they're not allowed to bear arms. Snake, however, suspects that Galvez is actually allied with the KGB, and when the professor is confronted with this allegation, he accepts it, informing them that Paz is unaware of these facts. Galvez tells Snake and Kaz that the Soviet Union wants to establish a stronghold in Central America, and as such, they want to hire the MSF to investigate and push out the armed forces occupying Costa Rica, who they suspect is actually the CIA. Snake is about to refuse when Galvez does something that changes his mind almost instantly. A few days earlier, Paz has been captured by the mysterious force, the CIA, while she was looking for a lost friend, and then consequently imprisoned and tortured. While she was able to escape, she recovered a tape recorded by her friend. Galvez plays this tape for Snake, who, much to his own surprise, hears the voice of his former dead mentor, the boss, in the recording. Confused and intrigued, he accepts the offer. Kaz also approves of this decision, since he sees this as a means to put down some roots for the MSF and eventually allow the organization to grow. In payment, the MSF are given a chopper for transport and given the use of a forward operating base off of the coast of the Caribbean. 
Big Boss, or Snake, soon arrives in Costa Rica, but when he does, he immediately notices that something is amiss. The CIA has brought a bunch of nuclear weapons with them to Costa Rica. Snake realizes that he needs more intel on the territory and geography of the region, enlists the help of the Sandinistas, refugees who are actually Nicaraguan guerrilla fighters led by Amanda Valenciano Libre. However, Amanda's little brother Chico is soon kidnapped by the CIA's forces. Snake realizes that he needs help to track the nuclear shipment, and the one person who can help him do that best is kidnap Chico, which is rather inconvenient for him since he knows the route through which the nuclear weapons are being transported. Amanda tells Snake of the prison facility where Chico is being held, and without further delay, Snake sets off to free the little boy from imprisonment. Snake locates Chico, who tells him of the route for the nuclear shipment, and then joins MSF. When Snake arrives at the facility where the nuclear weapons are supposed to be held, he finds out that they've already been transported elsewhere. His excursion to the facility is not in vain, as he makes some other discoveries. He overhears a conversation between a man known as Hot Coldman and a certain wheelchair-bound Dr. Huey Emmerich. Huey has created a bipedal nuclear tank known as Peace Walker, and Hot Coldman, who is the CIA station chief of Central America, plans to use Peace Walker to launch a nuclear weapon as part of something known as Project Peace Walker, which will eventually help him return to his original post as director of the CIA. The engineer Huey is hesitant to agree with Coldman's plans and does not see eye to eye with him. The conversation between the two soon turns into an argument before Coldman finally leaves. Snake reveals himself to Huey, who tells him that Peace Walker, built around the original concept of Metal Gear, is equipped with an AI system, and its purpose is to act as the ultimate nuclear deterrent. The AI system would launch a retaliatory nuclear strike after calculations without the interference of human hesitance and uncertainty, and Coldman means to use this weapon to show the CIA that it actually works. Huey, who does not agree with Coldman's methods, agrees to join MSF and informs Snake of the nuclear weapons and Peace Walker's location, and tells him to look for Dr. Strangelove, the woman who designed the AI system around which Peace Walker functions. When Snake finally finds Strangelove, though, he makes some startling discoveries. Even before that, while en route to Strangelove's location, Snake comes across a woman in distress, a French ornithologist named Cecile. She tells Snake that she has come to Costa Rica a week earlier in order to study the native Quetzal bird. And while recording the bird on a cassette player, she accidentally also recorded the voices of two women in conversation, and as a result of which she was captured and imprisoned by armed soldiers before she managed to escape. Snake realizes that the tape she is talking about must be the one in Paz's possession, the one that features the voice of the boss and that Cecile must be the friend Paz mentioned earlier. Sending her to MSF's forward operating base, which has now been dubbed Mother Base, Snake proceeds with his mission. However, he soon receives word from Kaz that while the tape that Paz brought with her earlier had indeed been the one that Cecile had been talking about, Cecile had never actually met Paz in her life. While he is baffled, Snake chooses to deal with the situation later, deciding to focus on finding Strangelove first. And he does find her. Strangelove had previously worked closely with the boss in the past and had eventually come to love and idolize the woman. As such, she held a deep resentment towards Snake for the boss's death. She built an AI modeled around the boss's personality, and it is the very AI that now controls Peace Walker. Believing that as the finest rational human mind she has ever known, the boss's AI would be capable of selecting the most suitable targets for nuclear retaliation no matter what. She challenges Snake to destroy the AI to kill the boss once more. However, due to the AI's haunting words, Snake is unable to do so and eventually passes out. When he comes to, Kaz accuses him of letting his past interfere with his mission, and Snake vows to destroy the AI and Peace Walker when he comes across it next. With the help of Huey, Kaz is able to confirm the location of Peace Walker, and Snake immediately follows in pursuit. When Snake reaches the facility where Peace Walker is being kept, he discovers that it's also being occupied by Soviet forces, and soon he finds out why. But not just yet. He sees that Coldman has somehow taken Paz captive as a bargaining chip against MSF, and plans to launch a missile using Peace Walker soon, with MSF's mother base being the first target. Snake attacks Peace Walker in an attempt to destroy it, but he fails and the bipedal weapon is transported across the border to Nicaragua, with Coldman also escaping with Paz in custody. Snake gives chase, and he finally reaches the facility where Peace Walker is being kept. During this entire time, he also fought off against mechanical beasts, which are more or less the main bosses in this game. These include the Pup, Cocoon, 
Chrysalis, and various armored vehicles such as LAV Type G, MI-24A, and many others. At the facility, Snake realizes that both he and Coldman have been played from the very beginning. Soviet forces take over the facility, and it is revealed that Ramon Galvez, the professor, is actually a Soviet agent named Vladimir Zadornov. He has been in league with Coldman from the very beginning, however his true intention is to bring Peace Walker under Soviet control and launch a nuclear missile against Cuba instead. During this revelation, Coldman is gravely wounded and is almost on the brink of death. Just as Zadornov is about to turn on Snake to finish the job, the combined forces of MSF and Sandinistas storm the facility and the control room. This creates a distraction, and after an intense battle, Snake is finally able to destroy Peace Walker. Zadornov and Coldman are both captured by MSF. If you think this is Peace Walker's happy ending, you're very wrong. As is often the case with Metal Gear Solid games, things are far from over, and shit is about to monumentally hit the fan. While on board the chopper that is transferring the captured and wounded Coldman to Mother Base, Coldman somehow manages to activate Peace Walker's data uplink, and the result? Not good at all. The data uplink from Peace Walker convinces NORAD that the Soviet Union is about to launch nuclear warheads targeting the USA's west coast. Snake contacts the American authorities, identifying himself as Big Boss, and attempts to convince them that the data is fake, and that there is no nuclear attack coming their way. They do not, however, place their trust in his words and prepare to retaliate. At the very last moment, with a nuclear strike against the Soviet Union imminent, the boss's personality takes control over Peace Walker's AI and drowns itself in an act of sacrifice, severing the connection and effectively ending the threat. It's still not over. Some time passes, and in this period, Huey and Strangelove have together developed Metal Gear Zeke, a bipedal nuclear tank similar to Peace Walker that would serve as deterrent for MSF should someone decide to attack it in the future the way that Coldman did. Soon, Snake and Kaz both notice that Zadornov has repeatedly made almost successful attempts at escaping Mother Base. As such, they both suspect that he has inside help from MSF. And then comes the final twist of Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. Paz reveals herself to be an agent of Cypher, in league with Major Zero, and that she's been using Zadarnov's escape attempts as distractions to, bit by bit, bring Metal Gear Zeke under her control. She reveals that Cypher, or Major Zero, wants to bring the various intelligence agencies across the world under its control, and that he plans on doing the same with MSF, so that it and Big Boss can both act as sort of a shield complete with Weapon Zeke for the organization and ensure its growth in fact of any opposition in the future. Big Boss refuses Paz's offer, at which point Paz threatens to launch a nuclear missile on American soil if Snake doesn't surrender MSF to Cypher. A fight ensues, and Snake is able to cripple Metal Gear Zeke with an explosion, a result of which Paz is thrown into the ocean and assumed to be dead, but she is not dead. Coming back to Peace Walker, why did it decide to just drown itself? You see, Peace Walker's AI was supposed to be a mirror of the boss's character, a machine that will always be loyal to its mission just like how the boss was loyal to her mission in Snake Eater. The ending events of Snake Eater showcase the boss actually sacrificing herself for her country by laying down her arms. Peace Walker did the same thing, by laying its arms down and bringing peace. This was the boss's mission, fulfilled yet again through Peace Walker. Snake finally realizes the reason why the boss did what she did in Snake Eater and decides that his life will be different. He throws away the boss's bandana, indicating that he has let go of his past and finally accepting the title Big Boss. Furthermore, Kaz also reveals to Snake that he was in cahoots with Cypher and tells him that he only did it because he wanted MSF to grow and become a profitable business and a force to reckon with. However, during a later tape recording, it's revealed that Kaz is still in touch with Zero and that the Les Enfants Terribles project has been successful and that Solid Snake, aka David, and Liquid Snake, aka Eli, are growing up to be clones of the Big Boss. Peace Walker finally concludes with an outstanding speech in declaring MSF as Outer Heaven, an organization where soldiers are respected and where they will always have a place. Although never directly spoken about in the series, Outer Heaven is actually a concept rather than an actual place. That is why Big Boss first established this concept with MSF and later on during the events of Metal Gear 1 and Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. In the coming months, MSF becomes too huge and this begins the events of Ground Zeroes. 
In the beginning of Metal Gear Solid V Ground Zeroes, MSF and Mother Base face an inspection by UN amid suspicions that they possess nuclear weapons. Big Boss and Kaz suspect that this is another ploy of ciphers to stifle the progress and growth of MSF, and as such, they refuse to submit for inspection. However, secretly, Huey contacts the relevant authorities and tells them that MSF will submit for inspection and hide Zeke underwater. When Big Boss and Kaz learn that the inspection will indeed go underway, they begin preparing, sending all non-essential personnel off base. However, their preparations are halted when Miller receives word that Paz Ortega is alive and has been captured by a certain individual known only as Skullface, who is the leader of XOF. What is XOF? XOF is a covert unit of elite super agents that work for Cypher, but Skullface, their leader, has been trying to break free of Major Zero's control for a long time, with the intentions of ultimately taking both him and Big Boss out of the equation for good. Matters get even more complicated when Kaz informs Big Boss that Chico, who has been in love with Paz for some time, attempted to rescue her and got captured himself. Both of them are being held by XOF at Camp Omega. Snake is inserted into Camp Omega with the mission to rescue both Paz and Chico, aware full well that it would be a setup by Skullface, but left with no option but to rescue them. Unbeknownst to him, Chico, under severe duress and torture from Skullface, has revealed the location and some other important information regarding Mother Base to XOF. Snake successfully extracts both Paz and Chico. Chico, during the confusion, notices a scar in Paz's belly, and they realize that there is a bomb inside of her. The MSF medic successfully manages to extract the bomb from inside her stomach and throws it off of the chopper. However, when he arrives at Mother Base, he sees that the UN inspection was a ruse by Skullface to get into MSF's base. As a result, Mother Base is now under attack by XOF's forces and is being battered. It's an absolute slaughter and Snake manages to escape the base with Chico, Paz, Kaz, and an MSF medic on a chopper. However, a delirious and remorseful Paz informs them that Skullface planted another bomb inside of her, and in an attempt to save Big Boss from the explosion, she jumps off of the chopper. The explosion still hits the chopper partially, making it crash and as a result killing everyone on board with the exception of Snake, Miller, and the MSF medic. Snake falls into a coma and wakes up nine years later, with only one thing in mind, revenge. Don't you die on me, damn it! He be dropping! It's big now! Clear! No response! Hit him again! Clear! coma for quite some time. Yes, yes, I know. You would like to know how long. I'm afraid it's been... nine years. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. The body I've lost. The comrades I've lost. Stop and that's it for part two. When we return for part three, we will talk about the aftermath of the destruction of Mother Base and the rise of Venom Snake in the Phantom Pain. And that'll be about it for this one. If you guys like what we're doing at Gaming Vault, please consider subscribing to our channel, and I'll see you guys on the next video.